The story so far. Agent 47 and his handler, Diana Burnwood, are the world's top assassins working for the ICA. When all of their recent missions turn out to be contracts for a shadow client, things take an unexpected turn. All their targets have been operatives in an invisible organization known as Providence. Providence has infiltrated the highest echelons of power and secretly owns our world. The Shadow Client wages a silent war against them. And so the Constant, Providence's enigmatic controller, seeks Diana out. His request, track down and eliminate the Shadow Client. In return, he offers something irresistible. The truth of 47's lost origins. Neither know that the man they hunt is 47's childhood friend. And unlike 47, he remembers everything. that she and her team are laying low, most likely planning the militia's next strike. Reynard is one of the Shadow Client's top lieutenants, and yet she's not a target. Not yet, anyway. She's no doubt high on our client's list, but for now, it's information we seek. Infiltrate the house and get us a lead on the Shadow Client. Up for some B&E, 47. On my way. Bodies, male and female, early thirties, executed. I see them. Oh, poor bastards. Looks like Reynard's grisly handiwork all right. She was never shy about collateral damage. The owners? Don't think so. The house is registered to a non-existing environmental NGO. This feels more like identity theft. Like you, Reynard is known to use disguises. Hmm. Keep looking, 47. Nothing we can do for these people now. Good news for urban fantasy fans. Found something. Looks like research reports. Berlin, Shanghai. Every major malicious strike since Thomas Cross's kidnapping. Looks like Reynard had a hand in all of them. All in the past, I'm afraid. Keep looking, 47. See if you can't access it. Encrypted. Hmm. Assuming there's a key, Reynard wouldn't just leave it lying around. Wait. According to the floor plan, the room you're in should be a lot bigger. There might be a concealed space behind the wall. Check for hidden panels, 47. Should be interesting. Hmm. Appears Reynard's cell is launching another strike. Those are sewer maps of a residential area in Wellington. Well, there's nothing we can do about it now. Our priority is the Shadow Client. 
I'm in. Hurry. I'm detecting movement up the road. A motorcade, possibly Reynard's. Uploading the data. Hold on. Receiving it now. Hmm. Nothing on the Shadow Client or the other cells. No names, no aliases. I doubt she even knows whom she's working for. Wait, here's something. A message from Robert Knox of Kronstadt Industries. And by the sound of it, he's a Providence operative. A defector. Well, well, well. Client won't like this one bit. And you can't wait to tell him. They're back. Multiple hostiles. I see them. Damn. Okay, we've got all we're going to get. Go to stage 247. Eliminate Reynard, and preferably without raising suspicion. One step ahead of the Shadow Client for once. Let's keep it that way. Ugh, I thought this night would never end. What a snob fest. And I even missed out on the action. Oh, I'm sorry you had to endure all that free champagne and cello music, Orson. What can I say? You really took one for the team. Yeah, well, I say stick to what you know. Mr. Donovan, we thank you for your sacrifice. Is it done? Good as. And Mr. Donovan's wife and children? The guys will let them go at the stroke of midnight, unless I say otherwise. Boss orders. You know how squeamish he gets about collateral damage. to see a doctor. Like, seriously. Target down. Well done, 47. Now get off the property. Mercs have discovered your boat, 47. They're on high alert, combing the beach for intruders. Proceed with caution.
Well, it's official. New Zealand paid off. The client has given us carte blanche. Hunt down the militia by any means necessary. A week ago, Providence was a threat. How did you swing the board? The board are practical people, 47. A blank check is hard to turn down. Besides, the Shadow Client's war on Providence is causing a global panic. Someone will need to stop the militia. Might as well be us. And the man on the train? You never told them about his offer. Taking a contract for personal gain is against ICA regulations. Sodas would have been proud. Is that a sense of humor, 47? Whatever next, crying at the movies? Why are you doing this? I know what it's like to have everything taken from you. He claims to know about your past. Your childhood, your memories, everything Ortmeier stole from you. And you trust him? About as far as I can throw him. But this is our best lead in 20 years. I say it's time we break a few rules. Good afternoon, 47. Your destination is the annual Global Innovation Motor Race in Miami, Florida. After analyzing the data from Reynard's computer, the case is clear. The Providence defectors are Robert and Sierra Knox, head of robotics developer Kronstadt Industries. A visionary inventor and technological innovator, Robert Knox has spearheaded Kronstadt Industries to the bleeding edge of technological development. His equally brilliant daughter, Sierra, is not only a financial wizard, but also a fiercely competitive race car driver with a fiery temper to match. Kronstadt enjoys enormous popularity with global consumers. However, few are aware that the company is also one of the world's leading suppliers of next-gen military tech. Last year, despotic ruler Jin Po employed prototype Kronstadt drones against peaceful civilian protesters in the now infamous Tanyan Valley incident. And although it has yet to be proven, there is little doubt that the Noxes personally brokered the deal, making them complicit in a war crime. It is unclear why the Noxes would betray their masters, but likely the fear of being next put on the Shadow Client's hit list has pressured them to cut a deal with the enemy. Undoubtedly, with Kronstadt Industries on their side, the militia will increase their attacks tenfold, and so our contract obligates us to retire Robert and Sierra Knox and contain the damage they may inflict on Providence. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Miami, 47. The innovation race is on its last day, and it is down to the wire. Thousands of eager fans are gathered for the final laps of this unexpectedly close race. Sierra Knox is expertly piloting her red Kronstadt car. Her father, Robert Knox, roams the nearby expo building where Kronstadt is showcasing its new prototype car. The Kronstadt RK Mark III has seen fierce competition from the Chinese Kowoon Heavy Industries' new racer. Moses Lee, CEO of Kowoon, has taken a dominant lead and looks invincible. The stakes are as high as they can get. That is Ted Mendez, one of the country's most influential military-grade moneymen. This must be connected to Kronstadt.
Phil? It's Ted here. Just returning your call before heading over to the Expo building to meet Knox for the new Combat Android presentation. No, not yet. I'm letting him stew a little. The guy's a genius, and you know what they're like. Desperately lacking any discipline or respect for other people. Last time I tried to have a meeting with him, he had me sitting in a room for four hours before canceling. I'll head up when I feel like it. All right, I'll call you after the presentation. Speak then. Mr. Mendez, good to see you, sir. The demonstration is scheduled to take place on the upper floors. Please feel free to use the stairs right over there. Hi. Hey, what's up? soda dispenser has been on the fritz since we moved in. I can't work without my energy drinks, and I have been forced to bring my own. Well, yes, that's right, they fixed it today, but... And here's the problem, you see. Mr. Knox and his entourage of gun-wielding bodyguards managed to empty the machine in one hour. Now, I was thrilled to receive the email telling me the machines were back in order, but to come in discover how Knox and his goons have been seemingly bathing in Fountain View all morning. <laughs> well, let me tell you, the disappointment is substantial. Not a matter for HR. Uh, how so? I, well, I, I, see, I, I don't think it's wise of me to take it up with Mr. Knox himself. No, I... Oh, oh I, I, I see. Well, uh, uh, yes. Yes, well, uh, thank you. So, I'm hearing rumors on the corporate grapevine. Apparently, Knox wants to do a large-scale field test of Palace in a few months. Oh, that sounds like one of those entirely unfounded rumors that gets spread around down at the local bar after work. A palace isn't in a state to be field tested on any scale. Well, Lyle from outsourcing told me there'd been a request to reach out to Jim Poe. The reply back had been positive. That's insane! If Hello, that's sir. true, why would Knox risk another test after the, the Tongan Valley Massacre? From what I understand, Jim Poe is pretty lax with his import taxes and has a lot of money in the bank. I suspect Knox wants a piece of the pie. If Poe offs a few rebels to help improve palace, Knox is apparently down with that. If this leaked, the media would eat Knox alive. He dodged that Tungan Valley bullet pretty well. Only because Jinpo is a lunatic and had no qualms about taking the blame for the massacre. Still, makes you wonder. Mm, sure does. It's Derek. Mr. Mendez is here already. He's eager to get on with the demo. You should come by as soon as possible. Ah, Ted. Good to finally see you. Guess traffic was rough. Ah, never mind. Let me show you everything. I'm gonna say something provocative now, Ted. War is going out of fashion. It's dirty, it's just plain bad PR. Nobody wants to exchange their children and loved ones for flags and medals anymore. The glory is gone, Ted. But, luckily, Kronstadt has a solution for that. Imagine this. Android infiltrators operating in the field, 
disguised and fully embedded, ready to strike at a moment's notice. Indestructible robotic operators who can infiltrate the deepest sanctuary of any adversary, striking an unseen fatal blow. A surgical tool for a blunt world. Imagine an army of them. Fully equipped android medics seeking out wounded servicemen and injured civilians, bringing them to safety or patching them up then and there. Android pilots delivering payloads deep inside enemy territory with uncanny precision and minimal collateral damage. All right, Mendez, it's very straightforward. Let me show you. I just pick any of the pictures on the desk, then I use the scanner to upload the biometric data. And Palace will do the rest. Target acquired. WB. Obviously, the final system won't rely on you manually feeding it biometric data. This is still a prototype. This is a pivotal moment in modern conflict solution, Ted. Palace is entirely foolproof. All you need is to pick a photo from the table and scan it just like I showed you. It's perfectly safe. Go ahead. Just scan one of the images, Mendez. Target acquired. Dummy C. Well, how's that for impressive? Amazing, I know. And just think how much more Target we acquired. Dummy together. Dummy. My brain. The sky's the limit here, my friend. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm old fashioned. I still prefer the human touch. You're part of an old institution and you prefer the traditional approach. I respect that. But like it or not, this is the future you're looking at. Autonomous synthetic systems will entirely remove human agents from direct engagement. I guarantee this thing will absolutely murder anything you put it up against. Sounds promising. So, Mr. Mendez, impressive so far, yeah? Let me quickly show you our on-site robotics lab. It's small, but state-of-the-art, and it's fully mobile, so you can deploy it anywhere. Hey, good to see you, man. So, as part of the deal, Kronstadt will throw in one deployment cell per five units. Outfitted to enable on-site adjustments and calibrations, it'll be shipped in a bulletproof shell and can be dropped anywhere on the planet using the Kronstadt T-37 oh, deployment drones. So if you have any questions or want to see anything again, just let me or McKenna's know. I'll let you hang out and look at everything for yourself. Hey, don't be a stranger, Ted. Miles above anything I've seen pitched before. Not Collecting pictures of celebrity... Entrepreneurs now 47? Hmm. What are you thinking? I'm ready for another demonstration, please. Excellent. But let me just call Mr. Knox and bring him down here. Again. Mendez is ready for round two. You really need to get down here ASAP. Ted, let me give you the rundown again. All right, I think we can skip the intro. Whoa, Robert Knox. Ah, oh, Christ. Yeah. Robert Knox down. Now for the heir to the Kronstadt Empire. I can't. I have so many things I need to... ...fix before this day is over. There's just no way. Yeah? Robert and his daughter are both here. You remember I told you how they were whenever they were in events together? I'm literally doing everything I can to make sure they don't meet. He's fine. It's her. 
She's a world-class idiot. She's got every opportunity in the world to act like a classy lady. And instead, she runs around with rock stars, drives her precious cars, and acts like a rebellious teenager. She's almost 30. Act like it, lady. I think he's being extremely patient with her, to be honest. She's constantly dragging the Knox name through the mud. I don't understand why he puts up with it. Did you know she actually hired a mobster to break the legs of a competing athlete when she was 17? 17 years old! Robert would be better off just shipping her to Argentina or something. Get rid of her. Yeah, me too. Listen, I have to run. I'll talk to you later. Have fun tonight. Bye. to meet up with Sierra Knox over at the hotel. Yeah, after the race. I've just got to pick up the documents from my van, but um, I had to knock out a guy and steal his flamingo outfit, and now I can't find my car keys. Yeah, I know it's dumb. I think I lost them in the scuffle, but the real mascot is still over there. If I don't get them, I've got no evidence. Bye-bye money. I don't know. I, I, I need to figure something out. I'll talk soon. Can you do me a favor? Go check if my keys are over there. The guy's crazy and I don't... A disgruntled Kronstadt employee has acquired some dirt on Sierra Knox and intends on blackmailing her. Disguised as one of the racing mascots, he plans to meet Sierra by the old motel. Well, I always did feel that pink was your color, 47. There, go over there, but you look pretty tough. Peace. Some guy jumped me. He stole my mascot outfit. Who, who would do that? Hey, yo, did you find some keys over there? outfit. Really brings out your eyes. Miss Knox informed me you'd be here. She asked to make sure you brought the documents. So, did you bring the documents? I have the papers right here. Excellent. Come on in. Have a seat or something. I'll let Miss Knox be in here. So far, so good, 47. Now, let's see where this meeting is headed. job application or what? Something like that. Nice. If you don't mind me saying so, your particular choice of attire is maybe a little, I don't know, off? So for a job interview. Time time my suit is at the cleaner. And you couldn't and find anything else to wear. Correct. Correct. You must lead a very interesting life, my friend. You have no idea. So, Mr. Hmm. I never did catch your name. Names are for friends. Very well. Straight to the point in all business. Walk with me. Where are we going? Don't worry. What am I gonna do? Kill you in broad daylight. I just want a bit of privacy here. Not about to do sensitive business like this in front of an audience. Good idea. So just to get this straight. 
You claimed in your email to have somehow found internal reports that show Kronstadt's involvement in the Tungan Valley Massacre. Sounds about right. Let's be clear. You and I are having this meeting because my father doesn't need to know about this. It's just another undesired distraction. I don't care if the information is true or false. I don't care if it mentions moving money from the Nexus Project into Tungan Valley Damage Control, as you claimed in your correspondence. I do care about protecting my father, which is why you and I are now here. I see. Leave me alone for a few minutes, guys. Sure thing, Miss Knox. Uh, if you need us, just call. We're right around the... If you could quit breathing directly on me, I'd be grateful. So here's the deal. You hand over the documents and leave, and that's the end of it. And you will do that now. So here are the two possible outcomes of this meeting. One, you will leave this place and this country for good, and that will be the end of it. Everyone lives happily ever after. Two, you don't choose option one. Someone dies, right here, right now. Which do you prefer? Not much of a choice, is it? No, not really. What? <laughs> Both targets down. Well done, 47. Head for an exit, and we'll speak again soon. our own? Knox was a traitor. He would have caused incalculable damage. And he won't be the last. This is exactly what the enemy wants. We need to fight the sickness, not the symptom. And I have just the tool for the job. Right. The Burnwood woman. Eric Soders warned you about her, didn't he? The Crusader. I can handle Miss Burnwood. Everyone hates power until you offer them some. And <laughs> you ought to know. ICA speaks the enemy's language. We need them. And once we don't, <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Fact remains, we are shadowboxing. We need to know who we are up against. I was getting to that. His name is Lucas Gray, the late Mr. Cobb's head of security. Cobb was ground zero, first of our operatives to die. It had to be one of his staff, someone with military training and access to the plane. Yeah, grasping at straws. Gray is a mercenary, a veteran of every backwater tragedy you've ever ignored on the five o'clock news. Chechnya, Sierra Leone, the list goes on, but before 89, nothing. No records of any kind. Oh, come on. CIA, KGB, plenty of spies went dark. After the curtain was lifted, I cast a very wide net. Lucas Gray simply does not exist. <clears throat> If you're all quite done wetting yourselves with excitement, I couldn't give two shits where he came from. I only want to know one thing. How does he know about us? I swear to God, this hearts and flowers crap will get us both killed. Can't you see? Your so-called friend is working for them now. He's not the man you knew. This is his fight too, Olivia. Even if he doesn't realize it. Like it or not, 47 is our last and only lead on the partners. He needs to remember. He's coming for us. And unlike you, he won't hesitate. Just get me inside. Rico, 
I need a favor. Our Providence contact has shared the identity of the Shadow Client, a former mercenary and bodyguard by the name of Lucas Gray. His past is a black void, but our analysts are digging deep. Meanwhile, we've had a breakthrough of our own. Comparing the malicious attack patterns with global shipping and transportation routes, we've figured out how Mr. Gray and his paramilitaries move around the world undetected. They're using the distribution network of the Delgado Cartel, Colombia's biggest drug manufacturer. Clearly, Gray must have struck a deal with the Delgados. Consequently, if we can cripple the cartel, we can severely limit the militia strike range. But to do so, we need to slay a three-headed serpent. Sociopathic cartel head Rico Delgado and his two closest lieutenants, PR guru Andrea Martinez and savant chemist Jorge Franco. With equal parts guts and guile, Rico Delgado runs a thriving billion-dollar criminal empire. The word is, the brutal and volatile cartel head is hell-bent on becoming the number one drug lord in the world. To achieve this, Martinez, a childhood friend of Delgado's, has been buttering up state leaders and decision makers, paving the way for an expansion of the Delgado logistics network while the brilliant but aloof and antisocial Franco has been hard at work developing a new type of super cocaine. So, three of Colombia's most infamous crime lords inhabiting a decidedly hostile environment. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Colombia, 47. The remote village of Santa Fortuna awaits you deep inside the Colombian rainforest. An iron-fisted Delgado cartel rules over the village and its surroundings. Security around Santa Fortuna and the closed-off cartel compound is extremely tight. Armed sicarios patrol the streets of the village, ready to enforce harsh punishments to those who do not comply. Rumors persist of hidden transportation cave systems connecting the village, the cartel compound, and the hidden coca fields beyond. It is a rare occurrence to have all three cartel leaders present in the village at the same time. Expect that all targets are protected by scrupulous killers armed with automatic weapons. Rico Delgado inhabits his fortified mansion on the outskirts of the village, while Andrea Martinez can be found in her village office, or around Santa Fortuna itself. And Jorge Franco is engaged in development of a new drug in his field laboratory. Happy hunting, 47. Martin is not to talk to the shamans in person. Why doesn't she just get him herself? She's got a lot in her mind. The construction of the new plant has been stalled for days now because of what they found there. She needs him to cleanse the place. But why do I have to go get him? Ha. So, Andrea Martinez wants the local shaman to do a spirit cleanse at the construction site. She's ordered her Sicarios to summon him, against his will if necessary. I suggest you get involved, 47. After all, getting rid of bad influences is what you do best. Gero getting a rush from touching all the poisonous plants he grows in? There? Or growing your precious complexion or something? You better watch your attitude. The type has a great spiritual power, and I respect our tradition enough not to spoil around with that. Brittany? Well, Barrister, 
you don't get him over the construction site, Martinez will get us to the piranha. And they don't give a shit about your country. You hear me? the moment, friends. Let the sounds and lights of your surroundings caress your minds and spirits. Oh. Another traveler finds his way here in search of a spiritual mm. release. Come on in, my friend. Feel free to join us. Everyone is an equal in the eyes of your spirits. Call me the prank master for nothing. I'm afraid not. Damn it. thing before coming here and all the potions in the pictures were more you know red yeah red i understand perhaps you're right i'll look for my herbs too You don't look too good, buddy. So, it sounds like the Delgado's helicopter pilot dropped a package over the jungle by mistake. A red box containing circuit boards for Jorge Franco's new cocaine processing machine. Hmm. Sounds like a workplace accident waiting to happen, providing Franco can get his machine working. Inside a shed. Either way, the box is gone. Shit. What is it? Right on here. Good show, Peterson. Time to bring Franco down to size.
Confirmed down. Nice work, 47. It's Aita. Good to see you here. Your hermano sends his regards. The potion worked miracles. Hey. Welcome, Taita. Hey. Miss Martinez is waiting <laughs> for you in her office upstairs. Go right in. Excuse well, me. well, the famous shaman decides to show up after all. I'm pleased to finally put a face to the myth. I was beginning to think you didn't exist, what with your not replying to any of my inquiries. I've been looking forward to meeting you. Martinez. All right. I need you to get over to the construction site on the outskirts of the village. The workers there uncovered a pile of old bones and they've taken the opportunity to grab some undeserved recreational time. I need you to go over there as soon as possible and wave your magic wand or do an interpretive dance or whatever it is you do. I can do that. You can walk with me if you don't know the way. Otherwise, I'll see you there. Just don't take too long. I'm an important person. I will not wait around. Very well. I haven't been to the construction site in some time, actually. All right. I guess we'll meet up at the site. Here's the things about the money. How they had 15 guys in lock up in Mala. I'm happy you finally came around. Mr. Delgado will be pleased. I understand he's not an easy man to relate to. Trust me, I know exactly where you're coming from. And he can be quite volatile at times. Love it. Maybe that's why he lets me it takes a sophisticated the, uh, palate to appreciate external conversations. Between you and me, Rico could probably do with a spiritual cleansing himself. I'll see what I can do about that. That's not the way. Whatever. Be at the construction site ASAP, My father told me of the purification ritual hey. he performed in last week. He's never looked better. Come on. He's here for the cleansing ritual. Taita, so good to finally have you here. You have been sorely missed. Happy to be here. So, uh, here's the problem. We're digging some holes for the foundation, but now we come across these, well, bones, I guess. Turns out they're human, and the workers seem to think they're part of some old grave. Sounds likely. Yeah. So now, they're on strike. Won't work until the site is cleansed. But this is where you come in, you know? You think you can, you can help us out? I'll do my best. Excelente. Thank you so much. Muchísimas gracias. Yeah. Hello there, sir. Hey, everyone. Come on. The Titus here to perform his ritual of cleansing. Hey, everybody, gather around. Come on, come on. Have fun, sir. All right, Taita. Good to see you. The stage is all yours. Cleanse away. Thank you 
for your spiritual Easy, leadership and guidance. The site is clean now. It was a beautiful ritual. Excellent. Thank you. A beautiful ritual. I could genuinely feel the spirits bless the worthwhile endeavor we are pursuing here. They're at peace now. Expertly moved onto the afterlife by your Taita. I am confident this is the end of it. Bueno, muchachos, time to get back to work. Let's warm up the new cement mixer. That beauty will cover up any human remains in seconds. Nobody will ever disturb the dead down there again. Nicely done. Looks like the foreman is going to tour the site and show some of the machinery to Andrea Martinez. This might be your chance, 47. Más hombre. Hmm? I am eager to get this site back on track, Mr. Rodriguez. I trust you know what is at stake here. Si, sí, Senorita Martinez. I'm very much aware. I will drive the men hard to get things done inside. Excellent. Mr. Delgado needs to have the plant up and running very soon. It's yeah. vital for the business. I understand. The workers are not aware of the true purpose of the plant, correct? Oye, manito, we need some private time here, por favor. That is correct, Senorita Martinez. They believe it's a water treatment plant, as does everyone in the village. Of course, part of it will function as that. And the um, large-scale drug manufacturing section? How are you hiding that from them? We rotate workers on a regular basis, bring in contractors from Bogota, and use trusted people. Everything is leak-proof. Good. It's important to me that the villagers believe this is for them. Como no, Senorita Martinez. You! Why are you just standing around? This thing will not build itself. Your families depend on you working so they can eat. This isn't helping anyone. I noticed some overtime requests, Mr. Rodriguez. It makes me wonder what do these about the workers have been idle for a while. Well, the local ones have, yes. The high contractors have been constructing a lot of the building parts of site. To make sure we hit the deadlines, I've asked them to work. I see. Enterprising and resourceful of the Mr. Rodriguez. Muchas gracias, Senorita Martinez. It also helps us hide the true purpose of the plan. Martinez is down. Good work. That is P Power. Real name Paul Powers. Celebrity tattoo artist and reality TV star. Mate, I'm telling you, I've been in some crazy shit before, but this takes the cake. Uh -huh. you know where I'm supposed to be right now? The Delgado Mansion. Just knock on the front gate, they said. And then what? Walk in and tattoo the world's most notorious cartel boss. I can see how that's not easy. I heard he kills people. Just for fun. Imagine what he'd do to me if I messed up. Oh, sure, he's dangerous. But this is wife you need to look out for, caballero. So, P-Power. Celebrity tattooist of Tattoo Torment fame has come to Santa Fortuna, presumably to work his magic on Rico Delgado, a known ink enthusiast. Sounds like an invitation to the mansion, 47. Are you feeling expressive? I'm a dead man. Yeah, Dexy, it's me. Look. I'm in real trouble here. Call me back, all right? My way. I'm about to puke. Out of my way. Guy? Hang on, man. 
I hope you don't mind, but we need to frisk you. you like You're entering the lion's den, your... 47. Only Tread carefully. Practically everyone here is dangerous, Everybody not least that. Rico Delgado All himself. Right, Mrs. Delgado wanted to meet you. She'll take you to Rico afterwards. So famous tattoo artist, huh? Put some ink on skin as well in my time. Of course, most of that was in prison, and not always from people who appreciated the work. You know how hard it is to tattoo traitor on a guy's forehead while he's squirming around on the ground like a worm? Not easy, let me tell you. Interesting story. Thank you for sharing. I know. That is Catalina Delgado, wife to Rico Delgado for the past 11 years. Is that? Oh, it's really you, Big Power. It's such an honor to meet you. I just love your show. That episode where you tattoo the heart on the arm of the dead dying policeman while they're administrating CPR. <laughs> it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. A great moment. I cherish the memory to this day. Oh, see. So. Rico has this tattoo on his neck, and he insists it's supposed to be based on the photo of me. I'm not a fool, Mr. Powers. My nose never looked like that, not even before the operation. And sure, I've had a few ticks done here and there, but nothing as drastic as that. I want you to make it look like me, not some young skank. I'll do my very best, Mrs. Delgado. Ah, oh, Chico, let me just grab a quick selfie with you, all right? Sure, why not? Yay! <laughs> just look this way. Oh, que si, wow, we look so good together. This is great. Hey, so baby. far so good, 47. Now to leave your mark on Mr. Delgado. So, this is the famous P. Power, tattoo artist to the stars. Huh. You don't exactly look like you do on TV, do you? There's something different about you. Cariño, don't insult our guest. He's obviously not been sitting in a stylist chair for days, but this is P. Power. Who else would it be? Well, what about those cheekbones? The guy on TV didn't have cheekbones like that. Hey, Rico, enough. You know they fix all that in post-production. Just let the man work. Okay, fine. Whatever you say. Hey, man, how much for a cover-up okay. tattoo? I'm ready. I'm not Let's dating this Marcel thing anymore. It looks old. Cut! I swear to God! It's not every day we have celebrities visiting, you know? I find your constant photography very annoying, dear. I'm sorry that my social life is ruining your concentration. You need to keep still, Mr. Delgado. Oh, hey, I wouldn't want to stab you by accident. You heard the man, hey, Catalina. Leave guys. us now. I'm watching you. One wrong move, Fine. Be the end. Have it your way. You hear me? But that tattoo better look exactly like me when you're done with your new BFF, Rico. Calm down, all right? Everything's okay here. Better safe than sorry, boss. You're taking it too far, Jose. No guns. I'm sorry, but I'm just doing my job, patron. Hey, Jose, I need you to leave us alone now. You're too wound up right now. You understand? All right, boss, all right. But I'll be back in a little while if I don't hear from you, Cuevon. Oh, finally. So be some quiet. Can I finish my work now? <laughs> do what you do best, man. You got it. All targets neutralized. This should paralyze the cartel. Excellent work, 47. Now head for an exit.
status. Columbia assignment successful. Tactical targets neutralized. Militia transport network disabled. Location of primary target unknown. Team chasing several leads. End message, encrypt and send. checks out. We can prove the board knew about the chemical leaks. We'll have grounds for a retrial. It won't make a difference. They're too powerful. They're not the devil, Nancy. Just a company. They're not above the law, don't you see? This is bigger than James. Those bastards killed 80 people. And they got away with it. Think about what that means. No one's untouchable. No one's untouchable. Diana! Coming! Got what we came for. Move out. Good evening, 47. The militia has released a hostage tape, outing the existence of Providence to the world. This was a fatal mistake, and our analysts are tracing its origin as we speak. In the meantime, we have a lead on Lucas Gray's top lieutenant. Turns out the Delgado cartel's counterfeiting unit was creating fake IDs for the militia, and one operative in particular stands out, Wazir Kale, an infamous South China Sea pirate, better known by his nom de guerre, the Maelstrom. The Maelstrom and his cutthroat band of outlaws were the scourge of the shipping industry in the post-recession years. But his reign of terror came to an end with the disastrous 2014 hijacking of the supertanker, Francis King. Chinese elite forces stormed the ship, resulting in the deaths of a dozen sailors and most of the Maelstrom's crew. But Kale slipped away unseen. The Maelstrom's connection to Grey is unknown. But we believe it was he who carried out the audacious killing of a Providence CEO in Shanghai, along with two reactivated members of his old pirate gang, Vanya Shah, a shady figure in Mumbai's criminal underworld, and Darwood Rangan, the gang's old cashier turned dodgy movie producer. Shaw, Rangan, and the Maelstrom form Lucas Gray's Eastern Cell. They are a crack strike team, and stopping them is our client's most pressing concern. Unfortunately, the elusive Maelstrom appears to have vanished into the seedy underbelly of Mumbai, the cradle of his criminal legend, and no one knows his whereabouts or what he currently looks like. So, a bandit queen, a showbiz charlatan, and one certifiable ghost. I shall leave you to prepare.
Welcome to Mumbai, 47. One of the most densely populated cities in the world, home to more than 12 million people. If you wanted to disappear and hide from the world, this vast city is perfect. The maze-like sprawling slums offer secret paths and surprises around every corner. The elusive Maelstrom knows the city like the back of his own hand. Locating him will be a considerable challenge. A place to start could be the slums where his former gang, the Crows, has recently risen from the ashes. Darwood Rangan will be easy to find in his half-finished tower, wrapping up his new film called Mumbai Hero. While Vanya Shah has ensconced herself in the overgrown remains of an old train yard. Your three targets call this labyrinthine part of the city home, so choose your approach carefully. The 47. This is one of the Mumbai chores. My records show a few residential complaints about a new tenant in the building. Something related to strange behavior. It might be worth looking into. Well, well. It appears we have a rival assassin in Mumbai, and he's training his sights on Darwood Rangan. By the looks of it, I'd say we're dealing with a local operator, known as the Kashmirian. A local hitman known as the Kashmirian is in Mumbai on business. He set up a sniper nest in a tower above a stairwell in the local chawl. It appears he's targeting the luxury apartment belonging to Darwood Rangan, but has encountered a problem. Perhaps you can assist him. Karen... Dar, aka the Kashmirian, was born in the US, but fled to his mother's native land, India, 20 years ago, following an FBI investigation into a string of serial killings in Texas. He adopted a new identity here, and now works as a gun for hire for local mobsters. But who would want Rangan dead? Is the fan good to go? I know they're still trying to find the right lines for the shoot, but in case they do, we need to be ready with the deck. You bet. I had to hack the controls to reduce the power output of the machine. I don't know where Rangan got this thing from, but it's powerful enough to blow the entire set from the roof. Yeah, we don't need any accidents on this final shoot. You know what? One point. Gregory Arthur! What Has anyone seen Gregory Arthur recently? I need him here for the final photo shoot. This is the final shot. No one else is ready. If anyone sees Gregory Arthur, When are you going to be done mixing those colors? I mean, how long can it take to smudge out a few blues and reds? I'm creating art here. 70% of the work is finding the right colors. Color mixing is an entire art form on its own. It takes time. Yeah, well, get a move on. Mr. Rongan wants you to go and get him as soon as you're done mixing your fancy colors there. You got it? Fine. I could compromise a little with my artistic integrity. This would run a lot smoother. I, I... I just can't do it. Why did I go along with this? Hey, Mr. Hussain. Go on upstairs and wait for Mr. Rangan. I'm sure he'll be there shortly. It's me. Ah, Just Mr. Hossein, you know, ready at last. Did you get a shave? Oh, well, never mind. Come with me to the lounge. After you, Mr. Rankin. use of colors and form. Kya baat hai? If the new piece catches my forceful nature like this, I will have nothing short of a masterpiece on my hands. 
I'll be the envy of everyone. I guarantee a perfect execution, Mr. Rankin. Looking good. All right. Chala, let's get this done with. I expect these to be the final brush strokes, Mr. Hussain. I'm a busy man. All right, 47. Let's see if the aim of our Kashmirian friend is true. Hmm. Once the word gets out and my art appreciating friends see it, your phone will be ringing off the hook. I can't wait. Hold your breath for a moment, Mr. Rangan. And that's the reason I told you I wouldn't pay for the commission, by the way. I'm not stingy. No, no, not at all. But if I'm already paying you in exposure, hmm? well, let's not overdo it, huh? you know? I prefer cash over exposure. Clench your fist, please. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> but sometimes, Exposure can be worth more than just money. Because in this case, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Just wait and see. When you're done with this job, the contracts will be rolling in. That sounds wonderful, Mr. Rangan. Can you look up a bit? Thank you. That shot came from the Chawls. It looks like the Kashmirian finally got a clear line of fire. Darwood Rangan is dead, and not even by your hand, 47. What will you think of next? Hold up, 47. The Kashmirian is on the move. He's heading for another flat inside the Chawls. This might be worth investigating. If nothing else, we may get a lead on who his client is. The Kashmirian is moving to an apartment in the Chawl. It's facing the laundry area. I suggest we find out what he's up to, 47. Come on out, 47. Shah. It appears the Kashmirian is using this room as a base of operations. Let's see what he's up to in here. So, the Kashmirian is scoping out a bridge in an area primarily used as a laundry business. Interesting. It recently changed ownership and now belongs to Vanya Shah. It looks like he's found a new target and is waiting for her to get on the bridge. Perhaps your mentoring days aren't entirely over yet. Where did you leave the costume for Dawood Rangan? I can't find it anywhere. Oh, I took care of it already. It was a rush order, so I washed it when I came in this morning. It's drying upstairs. And you took extra care with it, right? The man who dropped it off said it was supposed to be used in the movie they're shooting in the town. Of course. I don't want to get on Rangan's bad side. It's neatly folded upstairs. Don't you worry about it. New foreman. Miss Shah wants to meet him up here for a talk, but he hasn't even left his office yet. Maybe he's busy making plans. Hmm. Hmm. Vanya Shah is eager to meet the new foreman of the Mumbai laundry business. However, the foreman has taken refuge in his office, unwilling to meet with her at this time. You might be able to use this to your advantage, 47. No. I think I accidentally scared him by telling him what you... did to the guy who had the job before him. My bet is, he's hiding down there. <laughs> That's funny. Poor guy had no idea what he was interviewing for, did he? Didn't even know he was going to be working for Shah. <laughs> Alright, so I need to understand a few things. Nobody keeps track of time in any way. The old foreman didn't really care so much about time. It was all about getting things done. So how did he track that? I can't see any of his old files here. I don't know where they might be. All right. How about the workload? How do you guys keep track of how many orders you go through in a day? The old foreman did all that. I think he kept most of it in his head, actually. That was one of the things Miss Shah didn't really like. That and the fact that he would give us breaks. She doesn't like giving breaks? Hates it. I see. Thank you. I don't know where the papers are. If I could just find them, it would make my life a lot easier. But the old foreman, he hid them somewhere. If I knew why, I wouldn't have to look for them, would I? I just want to make sure I understand everything. If I show up for the bridge meeting with Miss Shah and I'm not prepared, 
Well, let's just say I don't want that to happen. All right, I'll speak to you later. I'll never find those papers. Where the devil could he have hidden them? I haven't met the new foreman yet. Is he better than the last one? Matani, uh, he's still in the office. I know Miss Shah is supposed to meet with him on the bridge and talk about how to make you lazy workers do more. But so far, he hasn't come out. Who are you calling lazy? I work 15 hours every day. Aha, pata hai. Just relaying the words of Miss Shah. I think she's hoping this new guy will be liberal with his belt. If you know what I mean. <sighs> Great. I'm ready for my meeting with Miss Shah now. Miss Shah's been waiting for this all day. The foreman's ready to meet up with Miss Shah on the bridge. We're heading there now. Follow me to the bridge. You need serious muscle to try something like that. Best not to talk too much. Oh, hello. Don't just stand there. This isn't going to wash itself. Ah, my arms are so tired. I really need a break here. Oh, Shane! Work faster. Achha. Aja, it's just through here. Miss Shah will be along soon. Better get your shit together if you don't want to end up like the old foreman. Samja? So, that's the new guy, huh? How long is he going to last, you think? A week? Depends on what the queen decides to do with him, I guess. He looks tough enough. Might last a week in the pits. Maybe even two. Maybe he's been working really hard on that report of his. Maybe she'll actually keep him on. I can't imagine that. He's been hiding inside that little office of his all day, afraid to come out. I don't think he has what it takes. <sighs> the new foreman finally graces Oi, us with his report. What do you have to report? Well done, 47. You've managed to lure Vanya Shaw out into the open. Anything could happen here. I see a lot of dead weight. Hmm. I've made a similar observation. Tell me more. Well, the objective is find the root of the problem, work to get close to it, and then eradicate it. I like your thinking. How would you approach the task you see before you? My usual method is prepare intensely, study the problem, learn everything I can, Analyze all approaches. The idea is to gently nudge people to do what I want. And then, once the objective is in my sights, perfect execution. Not afraid to spill some blood in the process? Not at all. In fact, I find that happens quite often. I like you, Foreman. I think this could be the beginning of a very fruitful relationship. I aim to please, Miss Shah. I don't see you down there, little ants. Scurrying about at your own pace. Taking unnecessary breaks. Drinking my water. Wasting my money. You have had it easy up until now. But your new foreman will bring some order to this rebellious behavior. The days of slacking are over. You hear me? Oh my god. That is Vanya Shah taking care of 47. Are you there? Are you planning on outsourcing all your work to the Kashmirian from now on? The Kashmirian is on the move again. It's paid off to follow him so far. Maybe he will lead us to the maelstrom. 47, the Kashmirian is on the move again. He looks to be leaving his apartment, possibly the trawl itself. 
I... You don't know me, but your boss will want to talk to me. By now, he should have found out about the unfortunate fates of Rang Shah. I am the one responsible. Mad? No, no, no. On the contrary, I consider it a successful job interview. Just tell me where to go. Ah, yes, of course. I'll be there in no time. Stand still, and it will be over soon. Okay, you're good to go. So, you're the one who called. 
We'll see. Better make it good. I'll do my very best. Come with me. Mm. Delving straight into the heart of darkness, 47. Good luck. Something else. All right, it's just in here. Good luck. If you want to proceed, I need to check that you're not carrying anything dangerous. This will be over in no time. And you're good to go. Time to face the dragon, 47. The mysterious stranger enters the lion's den. I guess you know who I am by now. The Maelstrom. Indeed. Two of my most trusted allies are dead. Childhood friends, lifelong companions, and now you're here. I always see my contracts through to the end. <laughs> Admirable. Really, it is. I'm assuming Vanya put out the initial contract that drew you here. She never did like Darwin. Perhaps a uh, power play. While our plans are in hiatus. But why kill her then? Unless. Unless Darwood made a counter offer. That would be the smart move. But then you heard the rumors about the return of the Maelstrom. And so you took a chance. You figured if Darwood was assassinated, I would put two and two together. Eventually, I would have to teach the Slum Queen a lesson. You took it upon yourself to help me before I asked. A show of skill. A move to get to the top. Is that right, boy? You can only kill so many mobsters before wanting bigger challenges. Darwood and Vanya lost their way once they returned here to Mumbai. I blame myself for their failures. I should not have let them go back without me. They got lost in their egotistical pursuits. Darwood thinking he could use out my legend through his movies. Vanya assuming some mythological regency over the people of the slums. They forgot that which mattered the most. What was that? Legacy. In time, you become your actions. Vanya became cruel. Darwood became a hollow man. I wonder what we will become. What shape we will take in our final days. Exposed and roar in the eyes of the universe. We can't stay unseen forever. Death comes for us all, my friend. That it does. You are now one of us. You can walk around freely in the crow's nest. We will need to talk again, but not now. The infamous Maelstrom is dead. Very well done, 47. Let's finish this one. Mission completed. Time to find an exit.
orders in his room and all we do is grab it and toss it in one of the furnaces in the metal workshop barabar this is the third time you're asking me this question what's wrong with you nothing is wrong with me okay i just want to make sure i don't mess up when the boss asks me to do something you said the things they didn't dare do themselves According to records, this was a youth correctional facility until 1962, when the estate was overtaken by an obscure Soviet research fund, the Institute for Human Betterment. Looks deserted. The place was abandoned after a fire in 89. Then, only a few weeks ago, it was acquired by an anonymous investor using cryptocurrency. It has to be Lucas Gray. He's here. Be careful, 47. The breadcrumbs were almost too easy to follow. It could be a trap. Not a trap. An invitation. I knew you would. You've come a long way, 47. And even now, you don't remember. This place. This was our prison, where Father trained us, shaped us into killers for Providence. Now, you don't remember. They ripped it out of you, wiped it away, but I do. I remember everything. You're a terrorist with nothing to lose. You'd say anything. I know it's difficult. You never miss your mark or question your function, but we made a pact, you and I. Do this. We both lose. There was an incident. That boy, he died. He lived. Because of you. Don't you remember his name? You know this. Deep down, you know. What was his name? Subject 6. Your name is Subject 6. And what is our purpose? To take them all down. We were gonna tear it all down. The Institute, Providence, everyone who'd ever hurt us. We failed. The partners grew paranoid, made sure that Ortmeier's children would never challenge them again. 
I'm the only one who got away unchanged. The only one left who remembers. What Maya was Providence. Everything he did to us, everything he made us do, it all leads back to them. I'm breaking more rules than I care to count, Mr. Gray. What's your play? The partners hide behind a cloak of anonymity. Only one man knows their true identities. Your client, the top controller, the one they call the Constant. He is the key. <laughs> but he is untraceable. So what am I missing? A man would come to the Institute. A man with a Providence pin. The first constant. If we find him, if he's still alive, he's our way in. You don't know who he is, but 47 does. <laughs> That's what this reunion is all about. Show them. You're just gonna hand it over. Our one bargaining chip. Olivia. Fine. 47's memory was erased, irreversibly at the time. But after Ortmeier's death, his estate was acquired by the Ether Corporation. And they made an antidote. It's a long shot, I know. This is not how it works. We don't just join the revolution. ICA is neutral. We don't take sides. I hate to break it to you, lady. But neutrality is a side. It's the side of the status quo. People have died. Civilians. You align yourself with terrorists. Murderers. Sometimes even monsters serve a purpose. Look. Enough. You have a choice. But I made mine a long time ago. I will finish what I started. Subject 47, most gifted of all my boys. So you're the pick of the litter. Tell me about the incident. The subject ran away, he and another boy. The instigator was punished accordingly. As were all the neighbors. My men did what needed to be done. It won't happen again. Bring your house in order, Doctor. You won't like the alternative. I remember. Gentlemen, let's go over the plan. The first constant is none other than Janus, the legendary Cold War spy master, a KGB senior officer and head of the sixth column special branch at Lubienka. Janus is a certified genius and expert of counterintelligence. He retired from the KGB in 1988 when he fell out of favor with the Kremlin and defected to the US. Shortly after, the Soviet Union collapsed. Now, it is unclear when Janus stepped down as the Constant, but since 2004, he has been a resident of a quiet community in suburban Vermont. Mr. Gray. Right, so here's the catch. As an elite KGB agent, Janus was trained to withstand interrogation and torture. No amount of pressure will force him to disclose information he doesn't want to. Instead, we will need to search his home for clues. But if Providence learns of our presence, the game is up. So we frame Janus, make Providence think he was the real Shadow Client. Correct. I will file a false ICA report, claiming to have traced a number of calls from Janus's house to the Institute in Romania. The case will seem clear. Mr. Gray was only a figurehead. Janus was pulling the strings all along. And by eliminating him, we will have neutralized the militia once and for all. However, 
For this subterfuge to work, you'll also need to deal with Janus's security detail, a Providence Herald and former Secret Service agent by the name of Nolan Cassidy. Intel describes him as diligent and inquisitive, and we cannot risk that he contradicts our story to his employer. Seems workable. I certainly hope so. Everything depends on this next move, 47. You made this our fight. Now let's even the playing field. Whittleton Creek, Vermont. On the surface, a picture-perfect suburban dream. Wide roads, golden maple trees, and verdant lawns. Most residents here are white-collar professionals, ranging from university staff to government employees. Most, but not all. Janus's unpresuming home is protected by a host of bodyguards, and intel shows that the fragile former constant rarely leaves the property. Nolan Cassidy, on the other hand, roams the neighborhood streets. A recent arrival, the dutiful Providence Herald is busy making threat assessments and settling in with his security team. Now remember, this is about more than just revenge. Janus is the key to bring down Providence. So get in there and find us a lead. Good luck, 47. Forty-seven. I have marked your map with several points of interest. We're running this mission with very little upfront intel, but these locations could provide clues to help you obtain the information we need. Good luck. I have to tell you, these are the best muffins I ever had. I'm supposed to meet a client for a house show today, but I can't stop eating. Maybe you know him. Mr. Nolan Cassidy? Um, can say that I do. A realtor with a taste for the sweet things in life is in Whittleton Creek to show a house to Nolan Cassidy. It looks like he's stuck at a local muffin stand at the moment. It would be a shame to keep Cassidy waiting, wouldn't it? He's, uh, he's interested in the Schmidt house down the road. You know, the one that Felicia down after the, well, incident. I'm not really from around here, so I don't know anything about that. Ah, I see. Well, hmm. It's the mierda keeps happening to me. Wait, aren't you Looking the good, realtor? man. I've been waiting Looking hours good. for you. Mr. Cassidy, I'm sorry for the delay. I'm ready to take you to the house. About time. Let's go. You know which one it is, right? Last one on the right. Far into the... This is the downstairs living room. It is most commonly used for watching television and other recreational purposes. Large room, with two easy to get to exits. Dark floors, hide stains easily. A room mm. with lots of potential. That's all fine. Is there more to this house, though? And here's the basement. The usual boiler elements are to be found down here. And it seems a room with a safe of some sort. Now that is more like it. That looks just like a vault. This, this is very interesting. Any luck yet? Nice work, 47. Let's hope he doesn't set off the alarm somehow. Frank. Go outside and check the garden. I want to know how visible this vault is from the outside. Anything out of ground, weird sloping things like that. You got it, sir. So you're looking to sell this for, uh, how much was it? Yes, now this is more like it. This I can use. Very nice indeed. 
All right, let me have a look at this thing. Advanced Kronstadt Matrix Laser Home Security System. <laughs> we used to break these open for training at the Academy. The thing about these systems is, most homeowners are lazy. So, they don't reset the factory settings and enter their own codes. Let's just try the standard admin code, just for fun. Well, what do you know? It worked. Looks like Schmidt was a bigger amateur than I imagined. So you're looking to sell this for, uh, how much was it again? 1.1? Sounds about right. Hmm, I suppose that's not unreasonable. And this vault unit looks quite versatile. Internal climate control and explosive laser security. All the comforts of home. Yes. Quite interesting. And a nice looking safe in here, too. Any idea what the previous owner was using this for? No idea. Maybe a mausoleum. Huh. That's weird. But I think I can come up with some good uses for it. All right. I think I've seen enough. No. No! Don't turn it! Casting is down. Good work, 47. Janus awaits your attention. like a complete ass. All right, I better go. You know, it... Oh, no way. Uh, he's been sitting there most of the day. I don't know what he's reading. But it looks like it's the most interesting thing he's ever come across. It's the new Cassandra Snow novel, maybe. Slivers of Past Shimmers, or something like that. See, my wife's reading it now. I can't get her to do anything around the house. No, no, it's not a novel. I think it's a, a journal, or a, or a diary. He's one of the security people working over at that old Russian guy's house. That's got to be something from the old man's archives. Oh. If that's one of Janus's diaries, it, it might house. contain some important information about his past. Our past. Or maybe something that can help us locate the constant. Hmm. One of Janus's many diaries. He's apparently been the chairman of the Ark Society for years. He stepped down very recently, but is still attached to the society. Well, 47, this is valuable information. Have you seen that Janice's oddball nurse is at it again? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How are you today? Oh, just fine, Janice, darling. It's Saturday, so I've been making a lot of muffins for the town. You know how I like it. best could be used for people like you. Tide, benign, everything. Oh, well, I don't know about all that. I just feel like giving something back to the community that has given me so much. Speaking of which, when are you coming over? Your robe is ready. Ah, excellent. I'm still in school. Been there, yeah, my mother's cramping so much. I would love that. Say, wouldn't you like to come out to the stand and join us, giving away all these wonderful muffins? Oh, I'd love to, my darling, but I've got to do some sewing. Janus has a dressing gown that needs a few touch-ups, and he's getting anxious. Apparently, he needs it for something soon. You seem to have so the many robe things for going Janus. on, Mrs. West. What could he need I don't that know for? How you find the time? Well, when you're retired, you can get an astonishing amount of things done. A ceremonial robe of some sort, with a note from Janus attached. 
Hmm. The note is interesting. Janus has asked Helen to do a few repairs on the robe before he leaves for his annual trip. He even put a date there. This is valuable information, 47. The first annual gathering of the Ark Society. Hmm, that rings a bell. If Janus was its founder, perhaps he's still attending these gatherings, 47. This could be valuable information indeed. One of Janus's old micro films. It might contain important information. All you need now is to find a device to read it on. Clearly, Janus is a meticulous man. This microfilm contains a lot of heavily redacted minutes from what appears to be a yearly event of some sort. Plenty of initials and project code names that don't ring any bells. Janus is mentioned by name throughout, however. This is a very important find, 47. Good work, 47. We now know Janus is meeting with a constant at an event related to the Ark Society. And we have an approximate date as well. I think that's all we're going to get. We're close to the finish line. It's time to end this. <coughs> Who are you? Where's Lafayette? He's not well. Jesus, Hopefully get out of something life. serious. I wouldn't mind if Lafayette was replaced permanently. He's an insufferable bore with a room temperature IQ. But if you're the new guy, you'll need to be on time. I have a busy schedule, you know. You have a very distinct face, my friend. <sighs> so, back to this. What do you think you're doing? Oof, you need shoes. to take at least two Function steps Function over back. fashion, I guess. So, back to this thing. I'll just spend a few minutes with the inhaler to fill my system with as much oxygen as possible before we proceed to the bathroom for the health check itself. Well, while Mr. Janus fills his lungs, I'd like a quick word with you. Please, come with me. All right, new guy. Now, I know this looks like a relaxed operation, but I run a tight ship. Nobody gets alone time with Janus unless I know them, and I don't know you. So here's what I'll do. I'm going downstairs to run a security check on you. It should only be a few minutes. In the meantime, you wait in the study. We'll lock the doors and my men will make sure you don't accidentally wander off. I'm sure you understand. Please, wait in there. 47, you have to find a way out of there. I can't possibly construct a viable ID for you in time. I'll have Miss Hall remotely interfere with their search, but we can't keep it up for long. Well, that was certainly an interesting turn of events. Still, no rest for the wicked, 47. You could probably slip back inside and give Janus his health check while his bodyguard is busy. Just be mindful of the patrolling guards.
I'm back. I suggest we go to the bathroom now. All right. Let's go then. Nicely done, 47. It's time for Janus to pay for his crimes. You know, you remind me of someone I met a long time ago. A young boy in Romania. Tell me more about this boy. Ah, the boy. I remember his eyes better than anything. Ice cold, defiant. Maybe it was the nature of the project itself that led me to dislike him, but I felt nothing but disappointment when I looked at him. What a waste of resources. Project? What project? <laughs> it was all based on one madman's pipe dream. Create an army of super soldiers through genetic manipulation. Somehow, he had managed to impress my superiors, and they had provided him with effectively endless resources to be wasted on foolish ideas and experiments. The project was idiotic. The subjects were erratic, unreliable. Why build an army of reckless super-soldiers when a handful of well-placed spies can do so much more for your cause? What became of him? Oh, I don't know. Dead, I assume. In the end, we had his mind wiped. All the boys underwent the same treatment. I didn't follow the subsequent cleanup process, but from what I understand, the doctor and everyone else associated with the project is long gone. I see. Yes, well, enough reminiscing. Are you about done here? Almost done. Yes. <laughs> the actions of the first constant catch up with him. Death feels like an easy way out for a man like James. Still. We are close now, gentlemen. Both targets are dead. All mission objectives are completed. 47, once you've left Whittleton Creek, I will notify Providence of our discovery. In the meantime, we'll go over the clues you found. Once we've located the constant, We'll make our final move. You make it sound so easy. Society. One of Providence's more obscure outfits. I've heard whispers. A survivalist club for the global elite. Billionaires preparing for a global collapse. And now we know the Constant will attend their next gathering. So where is it? That's the catch. The report is redacted. No names, no location. So it's a dead end. I can't track them, not without ICA backup. Now, I'm no big shot analyst, 
but it seems to me Janus was the Ark Society's founder, so chances are they'll want to pay their respects in private. Track the coffin. Worth a shot. You're right. It comes back in flashes. Fear, anger, but like it happened to someone else. <sighs> your gift and your curse, what they did to you. Well, I spent a long time feeling guilty about that. Now, I wonder who got the better deal. Yes, found something. What are we looking at? The ass end of nowhere. But this is where Janus's remains were shipped to. Our choice for a final resting place, wouldn't you say? Not bad. So we stake it out. Await the next gathering. Then we waltz in and kidnap one of the world's most powerful men. Without ICA backup. Like I said, it's a long shot. We'll take it. us all, our families. Do you think you feel more betrayed than I do? Get some perspective, please. Janus is dead. Lucas Gray is about to join him. And a cornered animal is twice as dangerous. Let's be perfectly clear. We were not exposed. The threat is neutralized. We are back on track. Even so, from this point on, we expect you to take... No. There is no way I'm doing that. How can you question my loyalty? In case treachery is contagious. Do you really want to do this to me? Is there a problem, Secretary? No problem whatsoever, Madam. Here's to loyalty. My man on the island confirms that the Constant has arrived. We head out at sundown. Here, in case the crew get ideas. Why are you doing this, Mr. Gray? You had a chance to walk away. Why didn't you? A year ago, I'm working security for this banker, Cobb. Only to find out he's a Providence operative. I've been running for decades, only to wind up where I started. We've all got barcodes on the back of our heads. Most people just never notice. 47 told me about your parents. How did they die? Car bomb. Sorry, 1989. Company named Blue Seed didn't care to pay for their mistakes. But I like to think no one's untouchable. I'm... I'm sorry for your loss. You feel it, don't you? Unlike him, you feel it all. Everything you've done. It's a dangerous thing, having a conscience. Attention, gentlemen. Our source on the island just made a critical discovery. The Constant has a poison chip embedded in his neck. A failsafe, in case he's compromised. Damn it. Oh, you should have expected something like this. 
So, we subdue the Constant before he has time to react. Not that simple. The device is remote triggered, and during his stay on the island, two kill switches have been entrusted to twin sisters, Zoe and Sophia Washington, two young ambitious Providence operatives and newly appointed chairwomen of the Ark Society. Apparently, even the Constant is unaware of this arrangement. Right, change of plans. We divide and conquer. 47 takes out the Washingtons while I figure out a way to get the Constant off the island. It'll be tight, but once we're back at the ship, we should be able to surgically remove the chip before the partners have time to react. 47? Tell me about the targets. I know them from the archive. Zoe and Sophia's father is president of a powerful conservative think tank. One of Providence's prime assets. The apples don't fall far from the tree. No saints either. According to ICA files, the twins are pampered socialites who get their kicks from treasure hunting. Commanding a band of trigger-happy mercenaries, Zoe and Sophia prowl the world in search for ancient relics. With little regard for local culture or even human life, they stop at nothing to claim their prize. Well, collateral damage they may be, but safe to say, they have it coming. The Isle of Scale. Headquarters of the Ark Society. Founded by Janus in 1991, the Ark Society is the world's most exclusive club. Its plutocratic members fear the downfall of civilization, and they are willing to pay huge sums to ensure their own survival. Once a year, they gather here to shop the latest survival products and to showcase new initiatives and breakthroughs. Right. These gatherings are shrouded in mystery, so we have limited intel on what to expect on the other side of the walls. The Washington Twins are hosting their first annual gathering as chairwomen of the Ark Society, and the Constant is known to attend every year. Beyond that, you're on your own. Good luck, gentlemen. I dare say you're going to need it. space and council meeting. Should you wish to apply for art membership, please be aware that such cannot be bought, only earned. All set? Excellent. Follow me, please. Sophia Washington has called a council meeting between the original five members of the Ark Society. Sophia hopes to pass some sort of motion, but she faces stark opposition from ultra-conservative coal baron Jebediah Block. Hmm. I suggest you find Mr. Block while the council is still in recess, 47. I suspect the headstrong Sophia will not take kindly to dissidents and troublemakers. Stad designer in charge of the brain upload program? Sure. I what did he do? I don't know. Friend but of the Ark Society, yes. Really if I may be so bold, I heard about your predicament and well I believe well, whatever it is, she's plotting a fresh perspective. Hey you! 
Where do you think you're going? See the world does collapse. Definitely not through here. Get out of my face. The Ark Society heads off to a comfortable Arctic sanctuary. While the rest of civilization falls into chaos. That's about the gist of it. Sounds great to me. No more needy assholes. Why wait? Well, you do realize what kind of place it'll be, right? What are you talking about? A hundred or so people. No market. No economy. No social structures. It will be like a space colony. Everyone equal and dependent on each other. It will be egalitarian, sir. It will be, well, communist. My God. That's what I paid almost two billion for? Why didn't anyone tell me sooner? Merely food for thought, Mr. Block. Good night. I, I need to, uh... Great. So, brain uploads, huh? Living forever as a string of code. Yeah. As we know, Zoe Washington will host Janus's wake, but now it seems an antique ceremonial dagger, which Janus is supposed to wear during the service, has gone missing from storage. I suggest you locate the disputed dagger 47. This wake could be a chance to catch the target unaware. Set. Cue the music. Everything seems to be in order. Suppose we move ahead. Thank you for coming, everyone. The service shall begin in a moment. Thank you all for coming. As Janus's successor, it, it falls upon me to say a few words. I I'll keep it brief, for there is little I can say that does the man justice. Janus was our founder, 
and like all true visionaries, he was far ahead of the curve. While we, the privileged class, were blissfully toasting the end of history, Janus saw the writing on the wall. As a veteran of the Cold War, Janus knew better than anyone that when true disaster strikes, the rich are as damned as everyone else, unless we work together. Janus never got to see the collapse, but died peacefully in his sleep. And yet, what he started in 1991 will one day be hailed as the dawn of a new age, one where the best among us can thrive, uninhibited. This is Janus's legacy. Long live his memory. And now, you are welcome to pay the founder your last respects. You should know. People so long, old man. People always you are. You had a better run than most. And I most successful spy in modern listening. history. Oh, and that whole Jasper so, Knight incident was true? just... Was the old man oh, murder? Brilliant. He died the way he lived. Anyway, Let's enjoy your rest. That. You've earned it. Easy for you to say. Some of these morons think Sophia and I had something to do with his death. Now, why would they think you'd be capable of a thing like that? Wow. So fierce-looking even in death. Forget it. That Get mortician is a genius. I totally believe that you once wrestled a brown bear to a tie. Anyway, Godspeed, Mr. Janus. Sorry I never knew you. Goodbye, Janus. We won't forget you. Odd how you helped shape the 20th century, and yet nobody knows your name. As for Don, you old boy, you were always the best of us. I still can't believe I never got to beat you at chess. So long, my dear. I can't believe you're gone. Last of the greats. I'll make sure those naive fools who've replaced you won't mess things up too bad. Don't you worry. Goodbye, old friend, and thank you for everything. Rest assured, I will finish what you started. So, here we are. You didn't want me and Sophia taking over. Fought us tooth and nail, but a fat lot of good it did you. The partners, they turned a deaf ear, and deep down, Janus, you know why. Because, for all your smarts, you're just rank and file. Pedestrian, middle-class, blah. And we have the one thing Merritt can't buy. Blue. Blood. That's right. Good old-fashioned pedigree. That is why Sophia and me will one day be partners of Providence. And you'll spend eternity as a wax figure. So long. One target down. Nice work, 47. Next up, Sophia Washington. A remote trigger. Must, Must be a be kill, kill switch. switch. Hmm. I bet this would make the constant come quietly. But first things first, 47. Focus on the target. You know, I look around and frankly I don't see anyone with that talent and leadership in the group. Evening. President sure. Maxine now, James. I suppose. James was always no a combined no politician. No Which rank are you? Somehow. Oh, I'm more of an outside observer. Keep an eye on Say Make sir. sure this is Name's Sinclair. Don't have to in the wrong direction. Chief Technical Designer at Quanstad Industries. The name I really understood what happened about. there, but well, maybe it's best not to ask you. I know how it sounds, but I have talked to someone who saw this with her own eyes. The body was gone, Here, and the next minute I think it might in interest you. What's I this? this I think you life. know. God, that's the chip in your neck is my design, which means 
I can just override it for a price. A Most interesting. Rest well, in peace, sir. Bastard. Meet me at the tower and be discreet. We can't be seen together. Always am. The way I think Such about a it waste. is that Janus really Good day. made a difference. Now we have real and attractive contingency plans. I mean... Ironic. Good evening. The council meeting. You know what it's about? Climate change. Sophia Washington is trying to persuade James' original five to embrace the green revolution. Bad chance. Yeah, hi, how are you? Interesting. All right, Mr. Sinclair. I'm listening. Don't. In fact, forget all I said. Excuse me? This wasn't my idea. Sophia Washington. She's the one who told me to approach you. It's all a trap. Go on. I never asked why. I just went along because she's the boss. And you're telling me this now? Why? Let's just say I don't like to get my hands dirty. I see. Thank you for your candor, Mr. Sinclair. You have been most helpful. Hang on for a moment. Sophia, I need to see you at the tower. I'm sure you are, and no, it can't. Nicely done, 47. This should put Sophia firmly in the doghouse. I am sorry you got dragged into this. Sophia is spectacularly ambitious. Unfortunately, like most people of her elk, she lacks humility and a sense of station. And who are you, exactly? A humble advisor. Nothing more. Power without responsibility. Nothing humble about that. Hmm. You have my interest, Mr. Sinclair. I think we'll speak again. For now, you will excuse me. Sophia and I need to... All right, I'm here. Are you gonna tell me what's so damn important? Ah, Sophia. I believe you know Mr. Sinclair. We've met. What of it? <sighs> I don't blame you for trying, Sophia. Just for failing. Upstairs. Now.
against my mentor's wishes because I saw something in you. And this is how you repay me? You think because the partners noticed you that you have their trust, their confidence. I have served them for decades, and you don't even know their names. And yet, you're the one with a poison chip in your neck, and I'm the one holding the trigger. You? They gave it to you. Ouch. That's gotta sting. I mean... The constant is like the voice of God, right? Only he speaks for the partners. Surely they wouldn't dream of undermining his authority. Only the partners are old school, aren't they? They recognize class, pedigree, birds of a feather, and all that. And you, you reek of middle class. You carry the stink of public transportation. And while you have spent decades climbing the corporate ladder, me and Zoe, we've got ourselves a private elevator and it goes straight to the top. Don't fool yourself, Sophia. They may use you to punish me, but you're a tool, nothing more. And this pathetic ruse only shows me how much you have yet to learn. I've said my piece. We're done here, boss. Zoe, pick up, pick up, pick up. Shit. Yeah, it's me. Look, the Sinclair scheme blew up in my face. The constant nose. He hasn't told the partners, not yet anyway, but I, so I sort of lost my shit and waved the kill switch in front of his face. So who knows what he's capable of? This is starting to look like a shoot first and ask forgiveness later scenario. So, stop asking and pick up your phone. 47, if Sophia Washington triggers the kill switch device, okay. all is so lost. Take her out, now, go. before it's too late. <laughs> Both targets down. Impressive work, 47. And now, to confront the Constant. Mr. Gray, what's your status? I'm at the helicopter, but the place is crawling with security. 47, you better bring the Constant to one of the boats in the harbor where it's quiet. You can use the kill switch to coerce him. Delgado the Washingtons the are dead. I have the kill switch. What did you say? How could you know about that? You will head towards the harbor. No sudden moves. No signs or warnings. I will trigger the device if I need to. I know you. The boy in the picture. You have his eyes. You're Burnwood's assassin. Move. Partners no more, I take it. I had a notion something didn't sit right with my mentor's betrayal. You murdered him, I take it, to get to me. Not just that. He had it coming. Interesting. It was my impression that you were cured of such sentiment. The good doctor his serum specifically to target the seats of your emotions. Has Miss Burnwood's sense of justice rubbed off on you? I wonder. Just keep walking. For what it's worth, Janus always found Ortmeier's project distasteful, not to mention inefficient. But alas, 
Sometimes you have to play the hand you're dealt. Oh, I know. I don't mind him seeing other women, honestly. <laughs> I take it this is not an ICA sanctioned operation. What exactly does Miss Burnwood plan to achieve by targeting her clients? Violating her own code? She's doing it for us. Us? Oh, I see. The penny drops. I should have known. How does a man leave no trace? By not existing in the first place. Lucas Gray. Or was it Subject 6? He died when the Institute went up in flames, but no body was ever produced. And unlike you, his rage never faded. So, now you want the partners, the men behind the curtain who've caused you all this pain? Well, before you go knocking down a wall, you better make sure it's not low barrier. Enough talking. You'll do plenty of that later. We're here. Get on the boat. Mr. Edwards, still think this is maintenance. Oh, Miss Burnwood, what have you done? Changing horses midstream? Truly unprofessional. You know what we want. Where is the carrot? No carrot. You're useless to the partners. Compromised. Even if we let you live, you can never return. Why die protecting them? When I can drag them down with me. It's a bad hand, but it's all you've got. Three families. That's all it took. The Ingrams, the Carlisles, the Stuyvesants. Three dynasties, secretly pooling their resources over generations, creating a singularity so dense that nothing escapes its gravity. Never heard of them. Well, they've heard of you. In fact, you just became the top of their agenda. Go. We can't give them time to retaliate. Don't take your eyes off him. Be careful. Well, here we are again. I must admit I am disappointed, Miss Burnwood. I had such big plans for you. Save it. I know the truth now. You're outplayed. You have nothing left to bargain with. <laughs> you were so certain. So sure of the people closest to you. He never fails, does he? He never misses his mark. You found a window into his past. And yet, something else remains hidden. A simple truth you learned long ago. Diana! Coming! No one. Miss Burnwood is untouchable.